new in the last 14 months. So uh, if I look rusty, it might be true that I am rusty. Uh, but I want to talk, so spinal decompression is something that Dr. Stetson and I, we've looked at for months and months and months. And when we started looking into it, uh, it was because we started saying, when it comes to the spine, there's certain things that we're very, very good at chiropractically, that we can change the way a scoliosis is moving. We can change the way a pelvis is rotated. But what we're having issues with is if there's a disc that's completely compressed together, that's where we're running into issues. So that started us on this journey where we started saying, what, what more is out there that can help a disc? Because for the most part, if you say, I, if, you, if someone has back pain or sciatica or neck pain or a disc issue, and they go to their medical doctor, what are they gonna get? They're gonna get pills. Right, and right now we have an opioid epidemic worse than we've ever seen before. And, and the problem with it is, if you, if you go to your medical doctor and you say, I wanna feel better in my neck, I have some sort of disc issue, some sort of spine issue, they give you a painkiller or an opioid, does it make you feel better? You, you feel better when you're taking it, you better believe, you, take, you go take oxygen, you're gonna feel good. But here's the problem, is it fixing the problem? It's never fixing the problem. And that's what we were, we were running into. And then that person takes painkillers, but they continue on with their daily life. And then eventually it continues to get worse. And then what happens? They go back to their doctor. They say, I've been taking these painkillers forever. I tried heat and ice at my physical therapist. It didn't work. What do they say? Surgery. We're gonna do surgery, right? We're gonna fuse the bones together or we're gonna cut off pieces of the disc and we're gonna hope that it works. But how, how successful has it been? Does anyone know? Very, yes, very low success rate when it comes to a big medical procedure like that. And in fact, the, the new DSM, the diagnostic manual, has failed lower back surgery as one of the diagnosis codes because it was happening so much. So many people were getting it done, and so many times people were saying, wait, I thought it was going to make a bigger difference, but it didn't. Or they're saying, I just, my insurance company shelled out thousands of dollars and this is this is kind of where it comes back to so if you go have surgery does anyone know how much it costs to have surgery to your mat maybe not out of pocket but at least to your insurance company generally upwards of forty thousand dollars and weeks and weeks off of work and physical therapy afterwards and then hopefully it fixes it right so here's the question why is it that so many people's spines have got to this point because that's the frustrating part to me and I'll say, well, wait a minute, why are we just all doing nothing for our spine? If you feel good, most people, if you say, I feel good, there's no pain in my spine, what do they do for their spine? Nothing. Nothing. Until they start having pain, right? And then uh, by the time they're having pain, there's already issues there. So they're starting to say, okay, now I'm having pain, where do I go? They go to their medical doctor, they go down the medication route, and then they go down the surgery route, and then they say, I'm frustrated, why didn't tell anyone tell me what else there is? So that's the road that we went down where we started saying, you know what, there's gotta be something else. So we started looking at a spinal decompression. It started with a trip for us. We started hearing about clinics that were doing spinal decompression, and they were advertising, they were saying, that statistics of how many people were not getting surgery or how many people were healing the discs in their spine by doing spinal decompression. We said, we gotta check this out. So um, we actually took a trip to Illinois. We were looking in a clinic, we were going through and they had, it was a huge clinic. Was, there was a medical doctor, there was nurse practitioners, there was tons of people. They were doing um, stem cell things. They were doing a bunch of different things. But one of the things that stood out to us was the decompression machines. And they said, we have people on them basically from the morning until night, and we have so many people avoiding surgery that it's incredible. We're getting our name out everywhere. But there's one major problem that we're seeing when it comes to this. I said, what's, what's the major problem? They said, insurance companies aren't paying for it yet. But here, here's the other side of it. And, and when we started looking into it, we were doing our research with it, and we were going to all these medical clinics that were having this incredible, incredible results. And we said, how is it possible that um, not every single medical doctor doesn't have one of these in their office or every hospital doesn't have one? And they said, well, there are a lot that do. They said, but the number one reason they don't is because insurance doesn't pay for it. People don't want to pay out of pocket for it. So they're going to things that insurance pays for, like medication, physical therapy, and surgery, all paid for by insurance. And it's, it's even patient driven. Patients are saying, I don't want to pay out of pocket if there's any other options that insurance is going to pay for. So um, we found out the details. We started looking. We started to go to seminars. We started going to shows. We ended up on the DRX 9000, it's called. It's the newest one. And there's a few different features that we really liked about it. Um, 
but it has so many unique things that we said we want to get the absolute best of the best. And it probably took us six or eight months to decide on the one that we wanted to get. Ended up getting it. It does two separate components. It does the neck, the cervical spine, and it does the lower back, the lumbar spine. And the unique thing about it that you don't see in some of the um, older units, or if you go to the, some of the anti-aging clinics that are now putting these in there, or um, some of the physical therapy ones, if they're buying ones that are 10 or 15 years old, is it can specify which disc it wants to target, and then it moves up or, up or down based on that. And then there's even another component on it, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like on here, but there's even another component that shows how much pressure, when it's separating your joints so that there's room for the disc, it shows how much pressure there is at the moment. So I can sit there and I can look at the screen and I can see someone, as if, they're, if they're on their phone and they start getting stressed out, you can see their spine tightening up and you can see the tension in the rope is increasing and it's, it starts doing this. Almost like if you were at a, on a, had a uh, EKG or, or something done, EEG, and all of a sudden it started freaking out and then all, the, all of a sudden it starts, the lines start going up and down. Same idea, but we can see it with the tension in the spine. So here's what your spine should look like. Most of you already know this, but this is what normal looks like for the spine. So from the front, spine has to be perfectly straight. From the side, you need a curve in your neck, curve in your mid back, curve in your lower back. Head over top of the shoulders, over top of the hips, over top of the knees. If this is perfectly lined up, this is strong. This is how God meant for your spine to be in this position. And when you go see a three-year-old or a four-year-old or a five-year-old, this is the position that you see them in. If, if I go see my three-year-old, she can cross her legs, sit perfectly straight for hours at a time playing with Barbies, no big deal. If you ask one of us to cross our legs and sit upright, can we do that? No, right? In fact, most people, they, we're kneeling or we're bending for a few minutes, we start to feel it. Why? It's because our spine isn't in the perfect position that it needs to be. And here's the problem. If you take one of these bones and it's shifted out of place, or let's say that you're sitting on it, you're sitting in front of a computer, so your head shifts forward, and then gravity pushes down on it, what happens to that disc in between there? It, it compresses, it gets smaller. And I want you to think of the disc as a sponge. So if I have a sponge, and it's full of water, and I'm moving it around, and I'm doing something with it, and I'm squeezing it out, but then I'm refilling it with new water, or it gets dirty, get rid of the dirty water, put it in new water, squeeze it again, it stays big, it stays thick, and, and you can squish it, all the water will come out, you let go, it'll reabsorb new water, that's how a sponge is supposed to work. If you take a sponge and it's dirty, hasn't been cleaned, you compress it, and then you let it dry out compressed, what happens when you go back and try to use it again? Right, it's crusty, it's stiff, it's flat. Same principle applies to the discs that are between your bones. They're shock absorbers. They're, these discs are the things that allow your bones to move in your spine. And they also keep the, keep the bones separated so that there's room for these nerves that come out into your body. Nerves are your most important thing in your entire body, right? If somebody tells you your, your heart is the most important thing in your body, it's not true. It's your brain. In fact, we all, and we all learned that in biology, right? Everybody said, what's the most important thing? Everybody said, heart, 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 heart. No, it's your brain and your spinal cord, but these nerves have to get out there. If this disc wears away, and this is the issue that we were having, is what do we do if someone comes in here with a degenerated disc because it's been out of place for so long, it's been wearing improperly for so long that now part of the cartilage is, go is going away. What do we do for that? And it's funny because I'll often even have somebody say, you know what I want? I want someone to grab me from the head, pull me this way. I want someone to pull me from the feet this way because I feel like my whole spine is compressed because I've been in this sitting position, whether it's driving or whether it's in front of a computer or whatever it is in this sitting position that causes so much compression. I also like this analogy. Let's say that you're perfectly straight like this. Everything's moving properly in and out. Cerebral spinal fluid can go into the disc. You move again, cerebral spinal fluid gets pushed out. You move again, cerebral spinal fluid can go in. You lay down, decompresses, you sit down for a couple minutes, pushes it out, you go stand up and exercise, pulls it out, all of it goes out, sit down again, compress it, right? If in a proper scenario, your spine has movement at every single joint, and it's moving often, and when you sit down and compress it, it's for short periods of time. Does that make sense? Is this making sense to you guys? If you compress it, all the cerebral spinal fluid moves out. When does the cerebral spinal fluid get back in there? When your joints go through full range of motion. So if you're sitting for too long, you never get full range of motion. Disc can't get outside, or the, the cerebral spinal fluid can't get outside of the disc. So what does that mean for us? 
if you're driving your car and it's out of alignment, what happens to one disc or one brake faster than the other brake? It wears out, right? We all get that. You don't, there's a reason why when you start driving your vehicle and instead of like this, you have to hold it like this to go straight, you know something's gonna wear out improperly. Well, the same happens here. The problem is sometimes we only realize that after it's been doing that for 15 or 20 or 25 years and the person says, now what can I do? Well, what the decompression, spinal decompression machine is designed to do is to target the specific disc that we wanna look at. It, you put a harness on and then you, you lay on something underneath your arms. And what it does is over time, if it's completely compressed, so this is L5, which you guys will often hear about, L4, L3, L2, L1, it, let's say that L5 is compressed, it, the harness will be hooked up at an angle so that when the harness pulls, it separates that specific spot right there. And I'm gonna show you, yeah, go ahead. It's like traction unit. Traction, yes, exactly. S similar to traction, um, it's different based on the angle and based on the way that it's um, pulling and letting go, pulling, letting go, pulling, letting go. So um, if, you, if you're just, and there's old, older machines like that that are just straight traction machines, and that was one of the differences, is they would just press go on the, on the traction machine, and it would pull to 60 pounds or 80 pounds, and it would just hold it there for 10 or 15 or 20 minutes, and then they would get off. The newer ones, they pull, they wait until your body isn't resisting anymore, they pull a little bit more, wait until your body's not resisting, pull a little bit more, and then it lets it go. It lets everything go back, and then it redoes it again, and it does it cycle after cycle after cycle over one session. But traction, yeah, it's, traction's the, the differentiation is maybe just based on the unit of whether it's considered traction or decompression. So let me show you this, this is a side view of the lower back. So this is the stomach right here, lower back right here, individual bones in the spine, that middle part right there, that black part, that's what a disc looks like. So this person's standing like this, x-rays coming from the side. So when you look at the disc, every disc should be big, healthy, and there shouldn't be, when you look at the spinal cord, there shouldn't be part of the disc shooting back into the spinal cord. So when you see it, and this one is right here, when you see it pushing far back into the spine, this is a person who then has shooting pain into their legs. They have sciatica, they have numbness, they have pain into their hips or their groin area because this nerve is specifically associated with that area right there. So if this is like this, if you have this, a disc that's squished down and part of the disc is either degenerated, so it's getting too small, or part of the disc pushed straight backwards, the fix for that is to separate those bones so that takes off pressure, the disc can go back in. Does that make sense? So I have a video that I'll show you guys in a couple minutes. Um, it's, it's probably a four minute video or a five minute video, but I think it does a good job of explaining the different parts of the disc and how the disc works. What causes it? Disc injuries from trauma. This is one that I see um, often, usually in the neck. It's from people who were either in football or hockey or some sort of sport where they had whiplash over and over and over again and then it never got fully corrected and then it's 20 or 30 years later and they're saying when I was 18 years old or 20 years old I was in car accidents or I had these whiplash injuries and now I have arthritis starting to set in. Right? If you, the word for arthritis um, literally means the joint has inflammation but it's this term that's just thrown around everywhere and if you go to, often if you go to your medical doctor, you say, yeah, I have pain in my neck. They're gonna say, oh, it's just arthritis. You must just be getting old, right? Have you guys heard this a lot? Or they'll say, yeah, we'll take an x-ray. Don't worry, there's no tumor. It's just arthritis. You're just gonna deal with that for the rest of your life. It's just gonna get like that. It's not, again, it's not true. It's, if you do the exact things you're doing for the next 20 years that you've been doing for the 20 years leading up to it, of course, it's gonna stay the same. But if you change something and if you do something differently, um, that's when you get results. Prolonged sitting or bending that wears out the disc. Um, we're in an epidemic of this right now, and I'm starting to see changes where people are standing, where people are, are getting up, they're getting down, they're saying, I don't want to sit in front of a computer. In fact, there's a whole group of people saying, I don't want to just sit in front of a computer for eight hours a day, all day, every single day. I want to be able to get up and move. I want to be able to stand because of what it does to my neck and my back. Um, improper lifting or twisting, and unaddressed postural issues. So here's what it looks like. This is the the... Um, decompression machine, we have it in, in Forest Acres in Middleburg Plaza. 
Um, Stephanie is the one who runs everything there as far as um, decompression goes. She puts you on, she gets you off, she makes sure that it's the right weight, the right amount, that you're getting results. And there's two different units. So this is the neck unit here. This is the lower back unit right here. And these bars coming up right here are the ones that you put underneath your arms or kind of in your armpits that holds you into place. This goes up to your knees if you're doing your lower back. There's a cord that goes from here and it connects to the harness and it pulls. It, when it connects to the harness, this is what pulls. So this is the motor, pulls your spine this way, relaxes. Pulls your spine this way, relaxes. And then the monitor has all the details of what your spine is doing during that process. What can you see on the monitor? Can you see the spinal space? You see, no. So you see the amount of pressure that it's oh. pulling and you see when there's more resistance. Um, which, and, I, and I wasn't sure how accurate it was until the first time that I was standing there and I saw, heard somebody um, get asked a question that stressed them out. It was something about work. Someone came by and they were like, and, and you could see the thing was going straight across and they asked them a question and they said, oh hey, I heard this happen at work and you could see the, the machine start doing this because it was reflecting stress in their lower back. The way that we determine which segment we use is 95% of the time through x-rays. So we'll take a side view of the spine, we'll determine which disc has the lowest height, and then that's the one that we determine. In an ideal world, and I've got a study here that I'll show you, and I've got stacks of studies here. I, don't, I'm, I decided I'm not gonna go through all these with you tonight, but um, if there's um, a scenario where we have an MRI, that's even better. We can specifically measure, there's a study in here where they measure disc height through MRI before and after treatments, and they will be able to look at every segment and see how much it's through. Um, unfortunately for us, that's just not a scenario that's affordable or that most people can do. If you could go get an MRI beforehand and then you can get an MRI afterwards, that's a great, you know, a great world. That would be great if everybody could do that. In this case, we don't do that. So we take an X-ray, we determine which segment um, from there, and then go from there. So here is what it looks like when you're on there. So see this is up here there's two different straps so there's one that holds you in place there it connects to the back and then there's another one right here which is the harness for your hips and then it connects this moves up and down based on the segment that we're treating every single session is 28 minutes long and there's a reason for that that's where all the studies have been done on 28 minute sessions and even looking back at some of them that was one of the things that made us want to get this machine is the studies being done are done on this machine. So there's, there's people in other states or places saying, um, we have, there's decompression, there's tons of research for decompression, but they're doing it on a different machine. That was one of the details about ours that we said, you know what, we wanna get the one that everybody's doing the research on so that we can say, here's the research and here's the machine that it was being used on. Um, this is for your legs right there and there's a scale. When you step on there, it automatically measures how much you weigh so that it can calibrate that properly for when you're laying on there. Um, for some, if you, if you get claustrophobic, does anyone get claustrophobic? Yeah, so we've had a couple, a couple scenarios where um, we, you have a, a, it's like a stop button or a panic button. Sometimes someone asks that. If you need to, you can always push it and then it just stops everything automatically. Uh, it's, a, it's a larger room though, so it's, it's not like you're in a, you're not in a tunnel. It's not like an MRI machine. You're in a larger room and you're lying on it like this. So, so most people have no issue with it. Uh, here's an example of a, of a disc herniation right here. You can see this bottom one. Here's the before one. So as you follow this white part all the way down, you can see this bottom one, this L5 disc is pushed into here, causing issues. This disc is pushing into the spinal cord. Of course, it's going to cause issues. Here is after, after um, 20 treatments. You can see this opened up. Disc was able to come in. Less pressure on there. So most of the research is done on a 20 visit schedule. So it's not that everybody has to be that every single time, but for the most part, when somebody says, how many times do I need to do it? We say, if you want the predictable amount that has been studied and that we've seen work great, we recommend 20 times. That's generally how it works. Um, usually the first week is five times, and then sometimes the second week is five times as well, and then it goes to three times. Um, Usually four to six weeks is what it takes somebody to complete an entire thing. And by the end of it, I've had people uh, say that I can't believe it. I, for 10 years, I've been looking for something and now it's helping me so much. Um, we, had, we had a lady who couldn't walk 
we tried adjustments on her for eight weeks, wasn't getting better. We said, let's go try this, tried it, and she, she was dancing around in there because it made such a big difference. Um, I had a gentleman who was so skeptical about chiropractic, he said, I'm not getting adjusted, but I'll go try that machine because he's seen it in medical offices before, and he tried it, and it was a massive change for him to avoid surgery. So there's a lot of different cases or scenarios how someone gets there, but the point is, and the reason why they're using it in anti-aging clinics is because almost everybody at some point has an issue with their disc, whether you feel it or not, whether you compensate or not, if you have an issue with your disc, it's going to affect your body at some point. And most people will deal with it by saying, well, I'm just gonna bend forward a little bit and hope that it feels better. And then bend forward a little bit, hope that it feels better. Bend, bend forward a little bit, and then that's why you see someone at 65 or 70 or 75 years old, and they're so bent forward, and they say, you know what? I feel perfectly fine when I'm bent forward like this. I'm like, well, what if you stand up? Well, then I have shooting pain down my arm, shooting pains down my leg. Well, that's joint issue, nerve issue, and disc issue over and over and over again to get to that point. Right. Yeah. How long would that uh, healing continue? Now, yes, you good question. Treatments and it looks like you're back to normal. Yes. So is, it, is this a permanent fix? So, so your disc will get better permanently depending on what you do to it afterwards. Okay. So if uh, the analogy that I used, which sort of, try, if, you, if you broke your arm and then your arm, you put it in a cast and your arm heals, it's a, it does fix it until you go break your arm again and then it's not fixed. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if somebody's sitting 40 to 45 hours a week and that compression is what's causing the disc issue, this will increase the disc height, but if that person goes and sits for 40 to 60 hours a week following that, it will likely over time compress again. Um, I've had some people say, you know what, it's, and, and we, were, we were asking this too because um, one of the things that we wanted was to be able to say, is there ever a time when you need to come back? Is this something that you need to keep doing or stop doing or you do it for a while and then you stop? Um, I've had both scenarios. I've had people who say they did it and then we haven't seen them since that if we check in on them, they're like, yeah, I'm still amazing, that fixed it. Um, we've got some other people who, who, especially if they're in the kind of the business world where they're sitting a lot, um, they're saying, no, I'm just choosing to come back because I feel better when I'm doing it. Yeah, I've got, I've got several people who are doing that. And not necessarily because even we told them, like, this is necessary for it. They just said, I feel better and I notice my body's better and I'm not easy on my spine, so this is how I do it. Question. Yeah. Not at the same time. Not at the same time. Not at the same time. We choose one specific disc per time, and that's how we do it. Disc. Yeah. So if you have a whole bunch of discs. It will. I'll get. I'll, I'll, I've got you. <laughs> you it's, it's a 20-year treatment thing. No, I. Let, let me show you this, and then my next slide will answer that. Um, so this is. So one of the questions I get is, I've had pain for 10 years. Can it help me? Can it fix it? This is an example. This is a study that they did where the person coming in had over 10 years. That's, to get into the study, you had to have 10 plus years of back pain. And it, on average, it was a 6.05 out of 10 on the pain scale. So 10 being the worst, they were at a 6. Afterwards, after 20 visits, they were reporting 0 0.89 on the pain scale on average. All right, so here's an example. This is um, before and after measurements of the disc using MRI. So this is the example when I was talking about we, where we can't do MRIs on everybody pre and post, but in a research setting, the point is figuring out does it work. They do an MRI before and afterwards, and this is what they found. They found the disc height at L5 to S1 on average was 10.2. After treatment, went up to 11.9. So the disc 10.2 wow. went up to 11.9. That's L5 S1 which is what the majority of people get targeted. That's the, pri if you talk to an orthopedic surgeon, the most common place in the lower back that people get worked on is L5-S1 because it's at the bottom. Uh, went from L4-L5, went from 3.3 to 5.1. L3-L4, 6.4 to 8.4. L2-L3, 6.1 to 8.1. L1-L2, 8.6 to 8.9. Centimeters? Millimeters. Uh, 
I do, I do have one, I think, but I don't have it on here. Uh, but so, so to answer your question, even if you're targeting one specific area, usually the worst area, other areas do increase with it. The closer they are to the area being targeted, generally the better the results are. So you can see like this one, 8.6 to 8.9, but it's because it's five segments away from the ones that are moving the most. So the, yeah, so this, is, so this is an interesting point, right? Because, it, and I, I would get asked this question a lot, is it normal to get shorter as you get older? Have you guys heard that before? And they'll go to their primary care, primary care measures them and they say, oh yeah, you're a quarter of an inch shorter this year than you were a year ago. Or compared to where you were 10 years ago to now, you're about half an inch shorter, but don't worry about it, that's average. People just get shorter as they get older. That's what they're being told. It's not true. It's not normal to get shorter as you get older, but imagine this. Yeah, if you take a disc that's big like, and healthy like this, and you sit all day long on it, and you compress it, of course you're going to lose some height over time. So can you get taller? Yeah. Are you going to be three inches taller? You know, am I going to be 6'4"? No, it's, that would be nice. It's not going to happen. But could you gain a quarter of an inch if you had lost a quarter of an inch? Of course. So you're not gaining height, but you could regain height that you've lost previously due to disc issues. Is that right? Yeah. So jump status meaning, does everyone know what that means? Jumping out of, Jumping out of airplanes, yeah. Oh. So, so I'm talking about like the weight of sitting. He's talking about jumping out of an airplane and landing the compression on that. Of course, how, well, how the body works. Parachutes, you hit hard all the time. Is that right? Nowadays, you land a lot softer. Yeah. You, you, had, you practice falling, you couldn't land on conventional Right. You, you, have you, have to to you have to hit it running or falling? You have to fall. Really? Fall. Wow. You have to fall a certain way, otherwise yeah. you get hurt. Wow. You get hurt anyway. That's right. <laughs> Either way. All right. Let me show, I'm going to show you this video, and then, I wanna, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, I want to talk about bracing too. So we've been diving into the bracing world. Does anyone have a spinal brace before or a belt? Looks kind of like this. So one of the um, factors is once we decompress it, generally we'll tell you to wear a belt to stabilize it as well. It does two things. One, it holds you upright in the position that we want you to be in. Two, it prevents you from bending or twisting in positions that we don't want you to bend or twist in. So if there's a disc issue in that area, often we will uh, be doing this. And one of the nice things about this is Sometimes insurance does cover these. So I, why is insurance only covering these and not covering that? I don't know. They're, maybe they're behind. Maybe it's changing. Maybe it's moving. I don't, I don't exactly know. But as the more we've been getting into it and the more I've been working with people, the more I've been finding if they have a stability belt, a stability support belt for their spine and they're wearing it when they're doing things that they know are going to hurt their spine, it makes a huge difference for them. I have a lady who would, every single time she would clean her bathroom, she would be hurting so bad, she was stuck in this position. And finally we said, you know what, let's just try this, wear it, and she wore it, hasn't been an issue ever since. Why? She says, I can't bend as far down. Well, yeah, that's the point. This stops you from hitting the point where your back starts to get injured. Yes, so osteoarthritis is when the disc wears away, gets smaller over time because it's been in the, the joints have been in the improper position. So, how does it it? so it separates it, lets the fluid, the good fluid go in, gets all the bad fluid out. Because if you, so think about this, if you, imagine this, if I hurt my shoulder, let's say I dislocated my shoulder, it was really hurt. And I, I, if I didn't move it, I didn't feel anything. If I did move it, it was extremely painful. If it's dislocated, what am I going to start doing with my other hand? Overusing. 
and we'll reuse it. I'm gonna do everything with it. This joint is gonna be stuck. And someone will say, can you grab that? Yeah, of course, I'm gonna use this. They're gonna say, hey, can you help me with this? Of course, I'm gonna lift it with my other hand. I'm not gonna use this joint. Why? Because it's painful to use it. If I do that and leave it like that for 10 years, and then one day someone says, well, why don't you use your other arm? Well, I can't move it. It's stuck in that position now. It's been stuck there for 10 straight years. So what do you have to do? You're gonna have to literally pull it apart, let the, let the disc and the cartilage around it heal, and then you'll start to be able to use it again. Same idea with frozen shoulder. The same is true with the spine. If you injure a disc down here, every time you bend, twist, or move, you're, you're not gonna use this disc. You're gonna modify yourself to start using a different disc. So what happens is the injured disc ends up being stuck and in the same position, sometimes for years and years and years. So what's the point of it? Well, if we target it, it doesn't have a choice. We pull this straight apart. It has to open it up. It has to move, has to let fluid in. And then when we let it go, it compresses again. Then it decompresses, then it compresses, decompresses, compresses. Does that make sense? Does that answer your yes. question? Does it actually uh, regenerate? Rege so a healthy disc, and this, and I remember in 2007, or 2006 actually, sitting in chiropractic school, and they said there's no blood supply to the cartilage, cartilage can't regenerate. In probably three years, by the time I was leaving chiropractic school in late 2009, uh, they started saying, actually we're finding there is some blood supply, and we're finding that it does regenerate, just at about a tenth the speed of muscles. So if you tear a muscle, let's say it takes you, you know, 10 days for it to start feeling better and six weeks for it to start healing. Um, if you do something like that to your disc, it's more like six months. It's 10 times as long. Does that make sense? So the same principle, I guess, applies where can it get better? Yes. Does it happen quickly? No, not really. Does it hurt when you're doing When you're pulling it apart? Oh, yeah. uh, it, so we, we have settings. So your very first time that you do it, we have the setting lower so that your body can get used to it. Build up. Yes, your body gets you, and then we increase it over time so that it builds up. Um, if some people are really sensitive to it and they say, hey, can we leave it at that lower rate for the first two or three times and then increase it, that's perfectly fine too. But most people, would you say people say that it hurts sometimes? Yeah, al almost nobody. painful, then probably something's not right. Um, I have had one patient who was in a lot of pain um, when they did it, um, but it was extenuating circumstances. Um, she had other issues going on. Um, but no, when I do it, it's just a pressure. Um, your body relaxes the longer you're on there, so the pressure gets less and less and the more you get into it. It's not painful. Most people fall asleep, I will say. Mostly. There's a lot of patients who have fallen asleep and they take a, you know, 30 minute nap and go yeah. more. I would say the, yeah, I would say the, the biggest thing we hear back is people are saying, well, it doesn't feel like it's doing that much, but it's because it's slowly increasing the pressure over time, right? If you're slowly, if it's slowly increasing, it feels like nothing. If, and some of them are used to the old school ones where it just pulls up to maximum strength immediately and it feels like you're being yanked off of it. No, this one slowly does it. Uh, and it can go up to actually a pretty, pretty high tension without feeling it because it's happening slowly over time. And then if you stiffen up or you spasm, it'll loosen off until your body's ready and then it'll increase it again. Um, same idea with, a, you know, we, we like the analogy of if you have a Ferrari a brand new Ferrari and you go up to 100 miles an hour, it's going to be fast, but it's going to feel fine, right? Ferraris are made to go to 100 miles an hour quickly. If you take my grandfather's 1981 pickup truck that has bolted, you know, it's, it's got bolts falling off and you can't feel it, and you take that up to 100 miles an hour, how's that going to feel? It's going to be loud and scary. Same idea. Why? It's just new technology and a brand new Ferrari is designed to go quicker than a 1981 Ford pickup. So. All right. Other questions? How is what the machine is doing different from what you do when you hang from this thing over here? Good question, too. So when you are on that, on like say you're using the traction machine right there, um, the amount of time that you can do it for is limited because you're holding it and the amount of muscles that you have to recruit are different too. So if you're 
just lying there and it's slowly pulling you over time, it can pull more and further than if you're doing it yourself on there. That one's just for your neck, yeah. But you're not doing anything. Not, not in lower back, yeah. But even the neck one, I mean, there, there is a neck one, but the difference between the neck one there and the neck one right here is essentially like a passive, passively lying there while it stretches it versus actively doing it on there. Engages different, different areas. My yeah. brother's got a, I mean, you, you don't really see a lot of injuries there. Yeah. But you can. I mean, I, the number of disc issues, maybe. the number of disc issues that I see in there is minimal. minimal. Yeah. And I think it's because the ribs are there. I don't, but it could. I, it's, it could. Um, we don't we don't have settings for it. I'm sure there are machines that could do that, but I've never even had a scenario where somebody needed it, so we we d wouldn't do it. I, I would say the majority of the time we take an X-ray, and if it's in the lower back, it's L5 or L4, unless they had a specific trauma to there. And if it's in the neck, it's C6, C7 are probably the two most common ones there because it's at the base of the neck. If you're in a if you're in an accident, if you fall on your tailbone, it's usually L5 or L4. If you're in a whiplash injury or you have a fall or land on your head, it's usually C6 and C7 that have the majority of the issues. Uh, all right, let me talk about this. Pre uh, I wanna talk about this a little bit too, the stability side of it, and then I wanna get into pricing. Um, one of the things that, that um, we said we were at, so we asked the manufacturer and we asked a few different clinics around here. There's one in Charleston that has a similar machine, um, and I believe there's one in Jacksonville that has a similar machine. Um, they said over a 20 visit span, typically they charge between 130 and 150 per time over 20 times plus the cost of the belt. So um, there are some places that were you know 3,000, 3,100. There are some places that were 2,900, kind of in that range. Um, Columbia is a different market and we've only had it for barely even a year and it was all well kind of everything shut down so I know that there's been people who have wanted it and, and it's gonna happen um, we're essentially right now we're charging half of what the average is for it so it comes out to about 75 per time um, we encourage people to do all 20 some people say well what happens if I start and then it's not doing anything for me we have we've never we've to this point we've never had that before but if that is the case, then we say by the 10th time, you should be able to say, I feel a significant difference. If you don't notice a significant difference, then we say it will stop it right there. Um, but I, everybody so far has had, yep, by their 10th time, I've noticed a big difference. I wanna keep going. I wanna get the maximum results. Um, How long are you doing the half price? The half price? We're, we're gonna see. For right now, I, it, could, it could be for a while still, or it could be soon. It's gonna be, um, we like, so here's what we like, is we like the idea that we have room on it for someone who's serious and someone who needs it, that we can get them onto it. So what we're not trying to do is get a bunch of people who just want to try it or they don't take it serious or they're, maybe it'll, maybe I'll come, maybe I won't, maybe I'll reschedule 30 times. No, we want people who are serious about it, they want to, they want to get better, they want to do it, we want to make sure that we have room for that. So we're the only one, I think we're the only accredited one in South Carolina. Yeah. There are other decompression machines, but not this one. Yep. Yeah, I've been on uh, one on the base and then one at another chiropractor, but it's different machines. And one of them I couldn't handle. It was so painful, you know, I just said, Yeah, wow. yeah. It's those old ones. They don't, they don't adjust over and over and over and over again. It just set it to the, set it to the rate, and then it goes to there, yeah. Um, here, so here's what this one looks like. Here, there's two features that I wanna show you on this. One, there's the high back. One, there's the middle area. And then the other side of it is there's no Velcro, or there, there's Velcro, but there's no um, stre stretchiness. What's the word I'm looking for, stretchy? Elastic. elastic, there's no elasticity. It's rope that pulls and strengthens it, so it never loses its elasticity, which is one of the things that uh, we were finding is it's fine if it's a thing, but people who are saying, I wanna be able to use this in five years or 10 years or 15 years, which I still have people who got one like this and they're coming in saying it's helped me and I've had it for 10, 10 full years uh, because they're, they're made so well. So 
Um, the, the deal with this is um, you wear it, not while you're sleeping, not all day long, but you wear it at least, if you do a treatment, you wear it after your treatment, and if you're doing anything that could hurt it or injure it, you wear it during that time as well. No, no, no. All right, so here's what it looks like. And if you and if you want to, I the weird thing about the insurance companies covering these is some will, some won't. Even within Blue Cross Blue Shield, this plan, there's 500 different plans. So we have to call, we have to ask them a whole bunch of questions, and then they'll say, oh yeah, that's fully covered, just give it to them. And then some other ones they'll say, oh no, that's not covered, or yes, it will be covered, but not at this time, or whatever. There's, there's hundreds of different recommendations. So here's what it looks like. Goes around the back, goes in the front, two different areas, you pull this, tightens it, flexes around your back, and then there's the other side, pull this, tightens it, flexes around your back like that. You have to bend, here's the thing, if, if someone's used to bending at, with their back, you can't do it with this, you have to bend at your hip muscle. Here, you wanna come, come, try, come try it on. So this goes around the back, yep. Here. All right. There we go. All right. How's it feel? Feel like it's in the right spot? Feels a little low. Okay. How's that right there? Okay. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to tighten that. All right, now try bending over. See how it makes her bend at this right here uh -huh. instead of being able to use the joints in her back. So you're saying that's... That's what you want, that's the, the goal, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. It prevents yeah. you from lifting with your back, makes you use your hip joints when you bend over. How long do you wear that So you... There's not a specific period of time. Um, the the general advice is two to four hours a day um, but not sleeping in it and not sitting in it all day long so some people they wear it for 45 minutes while they're walking or exercising or going to lift something or going to clean their yard some people wear it for three to four hours because they're out doing day-to-day -day things and they just put it underneath their sweater or whatever and they feel better if they're shopping and doing things that have it where they could hurt it, hurt themselves any other questions about this? You guys have been great. It was, it's been rainy. It was rainy all day today. I didn't know who was going to show up. Yeah. I knew it was going to be my hardcore people that were going to show up. That's the, that's the one. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so here, here's, what, here's what I'm going to say. Two, two different things. If you are interested in a belt, talk to Stephanie. We'll get your name. We can check um, if, you're, if you would qualify for it if your insurance would cover it, if you know it's something that you want. Um, it's fairly time intensive, so we're not doing it for, every, you know, we're not advertising everybody come here and we're gonna spend the next, you know, nine months on the phone with insurance companies, but if you know that it's something that you, your insurance might cover or you just want us to check, we will check it for you, see if it is, and if it is, then they, there's a good chance they'll cover it for you, we'll fit it for you, we'll make sure that you get it. If you wanna try spinal decompression, the very first appointment is $75, but you don't have to commit to anything, and you can decide after that, do I wanna keep going with it? Do I wanna ask more questions? Or did I love that and I just wanna keep going? So um, the, you know, one of the concerns is someone will say, well, I don't know if I wanna commit for 20 visits and six weeks right off the bat. That's perfectly fine. Try, try it once. We'll figure out which segment, we'll talk with you, we'll figure out which segment. If you haven't had x-rays from the side view, we'll take them, we'll figure out which segment to do them for, and then we'll go from there. Oh, Steph, yes. That, uh, a weird schedule in your travels, every couple of weeks will be set aside. Um, so the goal when you do a structured plan is to do um, five days a week for two weeks, then 35 days for two weeks, and two times a week for two weeks. That's how it's broken down. How 
And the Forest Acres Clinic. Has anyone been to the Forest Acres Clinic before? No. 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 Okay, so it's right off Forest Drive. Do you guys know where Middleburg Plaza is? No. Uh, Plaza, Plaza. I have a Canadian accent, so it's kind of. It is. So you go by tra So let's you say you go to Trenton Plaza where there's, um, um, and you drive pa on Forest Drive past Trader Joe's, yeah. and there's a whole new thing. You keep going towards downtown on Forest Drive, and it's on your right side. You'll see Middleburg Plaza. There's the um, there's big dermatology place. There's a whole bunch of big medical offices right in that area. But it's right off Forest Drive, but before you hit downtown. It's, ten, it's, it's probably 10 minutes from here, and it's all right off of Forest Drive. It's easy to get to. There's parking right, right in the back. You come in, um, and then they take care of everything from there. Yeah, it's, not, it's a nice office. I, I mean, it's, it's still good for you. You just may not get the full result. It's like if somebody said, if, if I only exercise once, is it good for me? I would say, <laughs> yes, it is good for you, but it's, not it's probably good. not as good as if you just did exercise regularly. You may not feel anything that day in terms of actual visit, but the next day, probably Yes, good point. That's common, too. Yep. So... All right, I appreciate you guys being here. Appreciate you guys coming for it. If you have any questions, you can stop me, talk to Brittany, talk to Stephanie. We can answer any of them for you.